Alexa, how old is Jennifer Lopez? Jennifer Lopez is 51 years old. She was born on July 24, 1969. Damn. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. We're going to talk about comps today. And before we get started, of course, I want to show you today's Coke Zero receptacle. Here's the Jennifer Lopez Show cup. Um, I have three of these because whenever I go to a show with somebody, nobody ever wants to keep their souvenir cups. Come on. Like, what do you drink out of at home? Um, Probably one of the best entertaining shows I've been to in sort of in, in, in a, the sense of a musical performer, um, but uh, she can dance. She probably shouldn't sing too much. Um, Britney Spears was probably the worst in terms of like girls totally lip syncing. Um, the worst performance I've ever seen in any show was Jennifer Lopez trying to sing live. I hope you dance. And I was like, I hope this ends soon. She became a big tent, if y'all have seen the show. It's visual. She's growing. She's growing. I know it's not interesting. It was weird. And I like the song just lasted too long, so no. But good show otherwise for entertainment value. Um, yeah, I like all the shows at Planet Hollywood. Um, my goal is to see Kelly Clarkson. So hopefully she comes back soon because I will be there, Kelly, with you singing. Texas. Yes. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, comps. So we're going to get into a little talk on comps. Hopefully this doesn't go on too long. But um, one, I put a poll on Twitter, and that's what more than half of you voted on. Um, I will tell you, I'm not a pro, I'm not an expert. This is not gonna be a talk on advantage play. If you wanna know what advantage play is, Google it. I'm not here to tell you about that, um, nor am I an advantage player. Uh, do I like to play? Uh, video poker specifically would be the advantage play game for me. Um, that has a good pay table, yes, but am I gonna hunt all day for it and uh, only look for those machines? No, because uh, usually having a drink, trying to have fun, and not worried about math. So there you go. And the one time I hit a Royal in Vegas, it was on a really terrible paved machine. And um, yeah, it was like the third spin in. So there you go. Whatever advantage players have a good time. This is about how I use my comps. And it's advice. If you have a different approach, feel free. Enjoy it. Um, but maybe this will give you some ideas. If it doesn't, that's fine. Um, don't feel the need to to share your approach if it contradicts mine because I'm not trying to get into an argument about what's better. In the end, again, this is about what I do. If you're inspired, cool. If you're not, have a happy weekend. All right, so a couple of things to start. Some assumptions. If we're going to talk about comps. I'm assuming you know what comps are, but if you don't, the complementaries, they're things you get, either services um, that save you time or money um, for the gambling or spending effort you put in at a casino. Um, and I want to clarify that it's not just collecting points to use as kind of a monetary exchange for goods or services. That's one thing, and we'll talk about that. But other complementaries that have come up, especially um, with the introduction of nickel and diming the hell out of everything like parking are things like free parking, um, free valet, um, cutting in line, which right now is super, super important. Um, and so those things I also have, uh, I have assigned value to as well. So um, I will consider that in our discussion too, because time is valuable in Vegas and in some cases time is money. So 
There you go. That's assumption number one. Now you know what comps are. Number two is that you're going to use your player's card. If you don't know what a player's card is, just stop the video now. Like Google it, research that. I'm not, not going to tell you about it, but like here's my whole stack of player's cards. Right? I have a whole stack of player's cards. And then I actually binder clip the ones that matter the most to me um, on any given excursion. So if I'm going to go out for the day, I'll binder clip those that uh, are the ones that I'm most likely going to use and stick those in my pocket. Why? I don't know, because I'm old and I like binder clips. So there you go. Have your player's cards. Know what matters most. Yes, I have a ton. You know why I get player's cards everywhere I go? There's usually sign-up bonuses. Do I use them more than once in some cases? No. Um, in fact, I bet you I could find one fairly quickly here. Here's a perfect example. I went here once. I went to the Rampart one time. Um, and... I probably won't ever go back there again. So I still have it. I like their card. It's cute. So I collect them and you should too use them. So also if you're not a gambler and you're looking at this video, it still applies to you because I think we lose a lot of opportunity in collecting comps and being able to maximize those comps on the spend that we do at hotels. If you're eating, using spa services, going to the pool and getting drinks, um, anything that costs money, gift shop, in the casino, use your card, hand it over and say, I just wanna get my points too. Most places will take it and give you points for it. Also, if you're charging to the room, which is a big thing, and I'll, I'm gonna talk about that, use your card, right? Make sure your card is associated with your account when you check in um, so that what we talk about is going to happen. All right. So we we know what comps are. We know what players' cards are. We're going to use them. Fine. There you go. Um, learn your systems. I have a few rules that I want to put in place, but learn your systems. I'm going to use my little teacher screencast here and show you all. I have the Caesars Rewards website pulled up. And if you just go to CaesarsRewards.com and then you can look at Earn and Redeem here in the red that's highlighted. Um, it's gonna tell you how to earn tier points and um, reward credits so that you can um, get these comps, right? And move up in tier and get higher card levels. Um, I'm not gonna go through this whole website, but I'm pointing this out because every card system should have a website explaining how to use um, their card and how you earn and redeem benefits. This one's okay. It doesn't tell you everything. For example, um, you can earn a tier credits uh, looking at entertainment here. I don't know where the hotel is under entertainment, but you earn five tier credits with Caesars Rewards for every dollar you spend on your hotel room rates and resort fees. So uh, yeah, if you're going to pay those resort fees, at least get something back for them, right? Um, and then the other earning rates here. What's missing on this page explicitly for Caesars Rewards, however, and it's something you have to dig a little deeper on and look at their fact and do things like that to learn the system, is that when you redeem the rewards, they're not always redeemed one-to-one. -one. So in this system, for example, one reward credit is worth one cent, one penny essentially. Um, but in a lot of the dining outlets, for example, when you redeem those credits, it's at a two-to-one rate. Right, and they'll usually have a placard showing that, or if you Google it, there are a list of which properties uh, or which outlets redeem at a less than one to one rate. That's not desirable. Same thing with redeeming free play, it's generally a bad use of those tier credits in this system because if you're redeeming um, $20 in uh, reward credits, it's usually at at least or at most uh, a two to one rate, right? So you'll redeem $20 and only get $10 in free play and then maybe not win anything off of it. You could too, but just saying, know the system so you know what you're doing. Um, and then also something to note down here, I'll just highlight this when I edit it, um, but it tells you how long it takes to have the tier credits show up in your account, uh, which is important. Uh, I have actually managed to move from pearl to gold a couple of times with the M Life program because I charged to the room and made sure my card was associated. And a few days later, that number bumps up 
rapidly because of the spend you've done in that hotel. So just know what their kind of timeline is for things too, so you don't freak out. Um, but also know that if it hasn't been applied by that timeline, you need to go ahead and investigate and make sure it's applied further. I got off on a tangent there. Just know the system. That's the rule. Um, and then have a target. Second rule is know what you're going for. Don't just collect points, collect points. If you have a save, favorite property to stay at and you like to eat there, try to do most of your gambling and spend there at least a considerable amount so that you're focusing your play on the places you like to stay, eat, relax, that sort of thing. Have a target. I have all these cards. I don't necessarily play all those places. I strategically determine how I'm going to play that. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's really not. You know which places you like and you know which places you don't like, right? Um, and so you can easily do that without putting too much thought to it, right? You, you know your top two or three places you like to go. Um, one of the things that I target every year, for example, is uh, trying to keep my diamond status with Caesars active because my target, my goal there is to have the, not the monetary privileges that necessarily go with that card. So um, having access to parking, which is, isn't a problem right now, but having the free parking, um, having the, the VIP check-in, which is important to me, although that's getting more and more loaded because more people are achieving diamond easier with like tier card match and stuff like that. Um, but I also like having the diamond celebration dinner. It's a hundred dollars you get every year to use that select restaurants in the, the Caesars brand under their umbrella. Um, and so that's fun to have. Um, but I, frankly, one of the most important things for me is um, I can use the cut the line privileges at some of the Starbucks outlets. And I know it's not, probably not worth the gamble that I invest, but um, I just like cutting the line there. It's important to me because have you seen during convention times how long those Caesars Starbucks lines get? It's ridiculous. And so we'll just jump to the front. All right. Rules out of the way, let's talk about ways to maximize your comps. Number one, I just mentioned this, you wanna focus your play when possible, and that involves a couple of key moves. Knowing when you're gonna play and how much you're gonna play, right? I always go with, and just to give you an idea, I'm generally 500 to $1,000 a day budget gambler. Um, my first trip, um, after the casinos reopened during the pandemic, um, I was about a $1,500 a day um, budget because I had saved some money um, and that didn't go well, by the way. So totally like bar set really high and <clears throat> pooped all over it. But either way, generally about a $500 to $1,000 budget for gambling alone um, that I take. Um, my average bet, I primarily play slots um, is going to be between about two and five dollars rotating. Sometimes I go lower if we're not having a good day and sometimes I bet up, but in general the average is going to be about two to five dollars uh, a bet and I probably play about four or five hours a day. So compare that to your situation. You might be above it, you might be below it, um, in either way, in either case, um, or you might be right in line with me. It'll give you an idea of like the things I do and what you might be able to do understanding your play and the properties you play at. Um, all right, having a target's important, knowing how much you're gonna spend at a place. If you're taking, like I always have coffee in the morning and I'll go and have get coffee, have a cigarette. Um, sometimes I'll stick a 20 in uh, and minimum bet as I'm like talking to people, checking email, whatever. And I don't want that to affect my, my, my rating, my, my average, rate of play, right? That's gonna be evaluated for comps and things like that. It's not worth the, the card in for the 20 bucks, so I won't play. Or um, if sometimes I, I do like a group gamble with other people at a property I'm not frequenting at, um, I might let them use their card if that's their, their thing, right? They wanna stay there to help them improve their rating because we're gambling more, but I'm not gonna get any immediate value. I'll do that or ask to do the same thing in reverse. So just kind of strategically use. I don't always advise using the player's card if you're gonna play less than your usual. Um, one thing for sure is like on the last day that I'm in Vegas, if I have like a couple hours to play, I won't put my card in if I'm only gonna like run through $100. I won't do that 
to collect points, and I also won't do that. Um, I won't do that for the purpose of collecting points. It's not going to be worth whatever I, I collect, but I also won't do that because it'll affect my rating, right? If I've been playing so many hours um, over the last couple of days at whatever rate, and then I play for just an hour or two the last day, and that you know it's half or less than half of what I'm usually playing, that average is going to be affected, and so I won't do that either. Um, all right. Number four, and this is for the non-gamblers and the gamblers alike, but especially those that don't gamble a lot. If you're spending on property, you need to be using your player's card all the time. What does that mean? Well, for example, um, if you go to Holstein's at Cosmo and you're going to have a burger, um, y'all have your food and everything, and when it's time to check out, hand your server your player's card and tell them, I just want to make sure my points are applied. It's never a problem. All they're doing is doing an additional swipe in their system, essentially, to make sure you get your points, right? The other thing that's important is that um, you understand that if you're going to spend to, like, eat and do things like that, and you have the option to be on property for otherwise the same price, you might as well charge to your room. Um, I... I'm going to talk about that. Nope, I didn't actually make it a separate topic, so let's get into it now. Um, if I'm staying at, with the, the best example is when I went to Excalibur. Um, I charged everything to my room. One, I had a dining credit, and you have to do that to get the dining credit applied. But two, for anything that goes over, that's stuff that the host is going to consider uh, taking off in a discretionary comp, right? Um, and that means they have the discretion to decide whether or not they can give you additional comps based on whatever your current comp value is. That's way too much to know, but just know, charge to the room because you could eventually get it comped off. But if not, you can also at checkout use your points that you've accrued to pay off part of that balance or all of that balance. In addition, anything that remains charged is going to earn you more points. Right. And so it's almost like you don't have to always remember to hand your card over right to the server if you're staying on property. If you're not staying on property, you need some more eat somewhere else. Um, for example, um, I went to a place at Bellagio last trip and I wasn't staying at a, uh, that property and I wanted to make sure my points were applied, even though they should have been. It's still in the same family as Excalibur. Um, I still handed over my card uh, to make sure that the points were applied for that meal. All right. It's enough of that. No, it's not enough on that. It doesn't just apply to food. It applies to almost any spend there. Some places won't give you uh, points for spending in the gift shop. Some will. Um, some outlets within the um, property aren't owned by the property. Uh, they are franchised out or an independent retailer that's renting space. Those might not give you points. Um, you just have to ask. And like, if you're too ashamed to do that, I can't help you there. But there's no shame in that. Vegas is a town where you're trying to make money. Like, that's the point of it there. So um, just hand over your card and say, do you get points for this? If not, you just put it back. Um, also, if you go to the spa, if you're going to the pool and buying drinks, all these places are most likely going to give you credit for your spend. All right. Let me take a drink as we go on to the next one. My next piece of advice is um, don't chase comps and especially don't chase stupid rewards. Um, I was at Sahara and I had taken a budget of uh, $1,000 because I was trying to um, maximize a promotion, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And it wasn't going well, so I stopped at $800. i am like, I'm not going to give them all my money. But um, as I was doing that, they also had a promotion to get like a pullover sweater if you earn so many points. Um, and when I decided to stop, I was like 11 points from it. And I'm like, in the end, if I put in another 100 and I lose it, this has become not only an $800 pullover, it's now a $900 pullover. It's not worth it, y'all. Um, don't chase dumb things like that. Now, if you happen to earn something that's on a promotion as you're otherwise gambling, that's cool. That's how I got this really dumb egg cooker from one of the local casinos. Um, I went to swipe my card when I was leaving and it said like, hey, here's your ticket to get this. And I'm like, I might as well get it. It'll be a white elephant gift at Christmas or whatever. Um, the local casino here that I go to, 
local, two hours away. Um, also gives out bottles of booze all the time, and I'm not a big drinker, but again, they're good for gifts. So people love Tito's. I get Tito's. I get Grey Goose, uh, Maker's Mark, and I bring those home all the time because I gambled anyway and I earned it. That's okay, but chasing something because you're close to getting the reward or what? Do you even want it? Do you even even need it? It's just it's not important. So don't catch yourself chasing something dumb like that. Don't chase those rewards and don't chase comps. Don't chase tier either. As much as you might be close to getting, you know, the next tier level, unless there's something substantial you're going to get out of it. One, one of the misunderstandings is, is that tier is somehow associated with the room offers and other offers you get. It's not. It's based on how much play you put through um, over time, right? And so um, for, I'm, I'm Diamond right now, and if we logged into my account, you'll see I get rates for every property in Vegas. Why? Because I don't give them any play beyond what I did in New Orleans to make sure that I renewed. Just the way it is. Um, so don't chase the tier either. It's kind of a... A, a false positive in that they're trying to give you some sense of more privilege. And in some cases there are, but ultimately if you think about how much spend was involved to get there, it's usually not worth it. All right. Next piece of advice, use the calendar to your advantage. Um, ultimately what I do every time I am going to a casino is I pull up their promotions page to see what's going on during the time that I'll be there. And if there's something that I can use to optimally play toward additional comps, I'll do it. Like I was planning to go to Sahara anyway, and I noticed that on the 21st, during my last trip, the 21st of every month, they do a 21 times point multiplier on slots only. Well, like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make sure I um, swipe my card. I'm gonna be there anyway, and so, that's cool because, again, taking advantage of something that's always going on. The other way I take advantage of the calendar is when promotions or other offers are available back to back on weeks or months that are adjacent to each other. Let me give you an example. I have a um, diamond, like I said, so here's my diamond card with Caesars. Um, and one of the benefits that exists right now, and they could change, um, but They've been giving two free tickets to the high roller, the big Ferris wheel um, that's in the link promenade. Um, two free tickets per month to Diamond members. Well, again, this is part of learning your system. When you redeem this at the kiosk at any of the Caesars property and it lets you get the two things, you get a ticket. And that ticket says you have essentially two days to redeem this for the two tickets. So you have this ticket from the kiosk to go then redeem at the box office for the high roller and you have two days. Well, on this next trip, we're arriving the last day or the day before the last day of the month, but we're staying through to the next month. Excuse me, heck up. Um, the plan is I'm gonna get two tickets on the 31st and then I'm gonna get my June comp on the 1st. My 31st comp is still active for two more days. So when I also get the June 1st comp, I'll have two more tickets I can use. So now I've therefore paid for four tickets without paying anything. We're going to upgrade to do the boozy cart where you can drink. Um, but again, knowing your systems. I ask Caesars Rewards if I get my regular high roller free tickets, can I pay the difference to get the whatever it's called. I call it the bar cart, but the, the little round thing that goes around that you stand, stand and sit in um, that has a bar in it, can I pay for the upgrade, right? And they said, yeah, you can pay the difference, that's cool. And I have points that I should be able to use as well. I need to check on that to be sure. I have in the past, it could have changed. All right, so using that to your advantage. The other thing I do is with free play. You have to know the gaming day for this, but there's one of my casinos locally for sure that I take advantage of this and then they, I took advantage of it and then they, they actually changed their system. Um, their gaming day went from uh, 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. the next day. Um, their offers were weekly and so I would have like $50 in free play. If I use that at 9 o'clock, I could then play until 10 or if I lost weight until 10 and claim the next week's rewards, right? Um, 
when that week happened, if I was there over that, that break. And so knowing how your gaming day works, and that's usually public knowledge, if you just have to do a little bit, bit of digging for what the gaming day is at each property. And don't think that it's the same across the system. For example, again, going back to Caesars, even though this isn't one of my primaries, but it's something I know, the gaming day isn't the same at every property in Vegas. So you just have to ask or look it up and find out so you know how you can use those rewards. All right. Um, 